Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the chairman and the ranking member for today's hearing, and thank you, Dr. Lacasio, for your participation. As many of my colleagues, I'm very interested in the issue of workforce development. Um, in my district, Oregon 6, manufacturing accounts for nearly 40,000 jobs, and I hear consistently that businesses need more skilled technical workers. And as you've mentioned, as we roll out these new programs from CHIPS and Science Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, Inflation Reduction Act, the need for those workers is really going to grow. And we recently had the directors of NSF and NASA before this committee, and I was excited to hear about some of their efforts in this area, particularly the NSF Regional Innovation Engine Program. Our Oregon universities are partnering with manufacturers in my district on an RIE proposal in the semiconductor space, which would include a substantial workforce training component. And so with all these new opportunities, I want to be sure that we're getting the most bang for our buck. These are good jobs that often don't require a four-year degree, as you well know. And we have a chance really to bring students from diverse backgrounds into critical industries um, for our future economy. And thank you for your exchange with um, my colleague from North Carolina, Ms. Fushi, and others. Um, so my first question is, how will proposed budget cuts to our NIST civilian workforce affect the deployment of this new manufacturing and technology workforce? Um, so, first of all, I, you know, I haven't been very specific about our workforce programs. Thank you for that question, um, because we are uh, in the process of really putting together our, our uh, and announcing our workforce programs within CHIPS. Um, so that's coming. So Thank you, you can anticipate that coming. Um, and we are bringing together universities and industries to really target and find out how best to link them to answer the needs of the community. Um, so that, I think, is very important. So related to the CHIPS workforce, um, obviously that funding is um, existing and it's not impacted by any potential budget cuts, right? So um, within other workforce development programs, we have very important programs related to cybersecurity workforce mm -hmm. development. We have a lot of workforce development in quantum um, mm -hmm. through our joint institutes. We have a lot of workforce development activities in really all areas of critical and, and emerging technologies. Um, with budget cuts or decreases, we would, uh, it would, it would sharply decrease our ability to promote the STEM workforce in areas of critical and emerging technologies and at a time that these technologies are blooming and developing and, and um, and if we want to be the leading tech economy in the world, it is a really bad time to cut down on, on uh, generating that next generation of STEM workforce. Thank you. And then just a quick follow-up. I feel like, it's like this is a softball for you, but is there more that Congress could do to help you and your counterparts at other agencies build that sustainable and inclusive STEM workforce pipeline? Absolutely. Um, so, I, you know, I really appreciate that. We are already trying to work together in, in certain areas of, of, um, uh, uh, that are important for our economy. So I'll just give an example. We work with NSF to, in programs that we've recently released uh, around um, the development of, of, of ICT technologies, mm -hmm. and that has been, I think, a fantastic and exciting program. We also developed a new program with, with around AI, responsible AI, mm -hmm. with um, NSF. So I think there are a number of ways that not only can Congress support us in our workforce development programs, but also um, support uh, the agencies working together there. Thank you so much, and I yield back. 